Hi everybody, so I'm here to talk about an Argentina Salar, so which hopefully uh, it's a bit, uh, you'd rather buy that one instead of a Chilean Salar. <laughs> so uh, our name is uh, Neolithium and we are essentially developing a, um, a new Lithium Salar uh, called Tres Quebradas, a 3Q Lithium project. A little bit of cautionary statements, and this is why we think Neolithium is the right place to be in. Uh, first of all, we're pure play. We have one asset, which is in Catamarca, in Argentina. It's a new discovery, which we um, essentially uh, discovered in uh, December of 2015. Um, we own 100% of the project. There's no, nobody around us uh, and the complex, and it's fully permitted to feasibility. We fast-tracked this, um, this asset. We've raised over $45 million. We've put back almost now nine to $10 million into the project. Uh, we've uh, reconditioned the road, we have uh, a camp, a lab, we already have a pilot pond which is evaporating as, as we speak, um, and we have um, extremely, uh, very encouraging results uh, on, on process studies which we can do regular uh, evaporation, not with any new processes. And we also uh, put out some press releases with extremely good uh, drilling results which are one of the highest in Argentina and one of the highest in, in, uh, in the world in terms of brine. Um, we, we intend to have a resource um, in the next, uh, let's say, a couple weeks, I believe, uh, and a new PEA uh, in Q3 of this year. Uh, we believe we have the right asset. We not only have high grade, but we also have the lowest combined impurities of any known Solar. When you look at brines, you need to look at two things, uh, grade and also impurities, and we have both. Um, we, we have a large footprint. Uh, you need that because um, if, you, if you don't have that, you're not going to be able to have a, um, a big enough resource to make this thing uh, happen and be economic. And um, of course, the people are one of the most important parts here. Our CEO, Waldo Perez, was the CEO and founder of Lithium Americas. He took um, Cauchari Salar, uh, Cauchari Salar and Lithium Americas up to feasibility. He is the CEO of our company. Our chairman, Constantine, obviously has uh, opened a lot of doors in, in Asia and Europe in order for us to have strategic partners come in and help us finance the project. And uh, the local team that's currently working with us is basically the same team uh, that was in Lithium Americas and we've already hired three people from SQM as well so that are, have experience in the Lithium uh, side and, and obviously operations. Uh, in terms of the structure, we have about 89 million shares, um, 105 fully eluded. We're fully financed at feasibility, uh, and we raised $45 million. We have a good um, uh, institutional base with 40%, uh, and uh, insiders on about 20. So this is where we are. We are at the bottom of the lithium triangle. We're essentially about 10 kilometers from the border with Argentina. Our, our, um, our project essentially goes up to the border. Um, on a straight line, we're about 40 kilometers to the Maricunga Salar, and uh, we're extremely close to, our, to, uh, to Chile. In fact, we are one of the closest uh, Salars, even though we're on the Argentina side, to the port uh, in Chile. There's no inhabitants or aboriginal communities in the area, in the area, I'm sorry. And um, as I said, we have 100% ownership of, of our complex. This is a picture um, looking north on a Salar. One of the unique aspects of our, our complex is that we have three uh, brine lakes. Uh, as we, it looks like um, a lake, a water lake, but it's not water, it's brine. Essentially an outcrop of, um, of our resource. Um, if you look south, this is what our Salar looks like. Uh, it's a bit more rocky-ish uh, than your regular Salar, which is uh, very flat. Um, this is what we've done so far. This is the camp that we built on site. It's about 60 people year-round with um, um, solar panels and diesel generation uh, that uh, we're able to subsist over winter, uh, if need be, for many months. Here we go. This is the road that we've upgraded to the camp. It's about a 60-kilometer road from the highway to the, the project. These are the, um, uh, the solar power, solar panels, and diesel generators. We have a state-of-the-art weather monitoring station, which is extremely important to understand uh, the weather conditions in the area. You can essentially tap into other Solars to understand what the evaporation rates and the weather are during the area, but in this case, we have to put one there in order to provide enough information to build your definitive feasibility study, which is next year. 
this is a lab, full chemical lab that we have on site to test um, all the evaporation ponds and some of the, the solar um, uh, sampling. We have wells and pump tests already within the solar, and we already built the pile evaporation ponds. In fact, they've been um, uh, evaporating since January of this year. Uh, this is a satellite view of our, of our um, Salar or our complex on the north. The, the black spot on the north is the lake that I showed a picture of before. Then you have a transition period, uh, transition um, part of the Salar, which is light blue, and then the white is the, the entire Salar, then another lake, another Salar, and another lake at the bottom. Um, one of the, another unique aspect of, of the Salar is that we have geothermal springs coming into the top, as you see, the north and on the west side of the Salar that the top or the northern uh, uh, geothermal springs bring in um, cleansing agents, mostly calcium. And on the west side, it's bringing high-grade lithium, meaning we get up to almost 1,000 milligrams per liter in some spots, but an average of 500 milligrams per liter constantly. And that is 500 liters per second of high-grade lithium on the west. And on the north, we get about seven to 800 liters per second of rich calcium geothermal springs coming into this are on the north. We haven't explored yet the ones on the, on the essentially the middle one. Um, we are obviously advancing the project very rapidly because of the experience of our team. We're currently at a resource definition stage. We'll have a resource in the next couple of weeks and we'll have a PEA later this year in Q3. This is a picture just to give you an idea how one of the hot springs are. This is the hot spring that brings in uh, high grade lithium. Um, I'm, not be, I'm not sure if I have a pointer here, but uh, there we go. This right here are cars, and over here you see some people walking, so it gives you an idea of how big this uh, UL Summer Spring is. These, this is what with geochemistry, this is what we did back in, back in April to establish um, what we thought was our grade and our impurities. We, we did about 250 samples. Uh, almost well, 300. I'm sorry, and uh, that helped. That helped us understand what we had. This is the results. Uh, all the black dots here are the sampling work. On the left-hand side, you'll see the high-grade lithium on the north, on the blue, and on the green, you see the high-grade um, potassium also on on the north. Now, obviously, that's the grade we have on the northern target. The average grade there is above 800 milligrams per liter. And importantly, as well, on the northern target, you see the white color that is very low on the left-hand side is the magnesium to lithium ratio, and on the right-hand side is the sulfate ratio, very low on both the northern target. So obviously, again, you not only need to look uh, about grade, you also need to understand the critical impurities. We, after that, we did some geophysics to understand where we, we should focus our drilling program. We did about 55 kilometers, nine geophysical lines, and this showed us, as you see on the right-hand side of the map, where we did those lines. We grew our, uh, we expanded our, um, what we could call the northern target, to 20 kilometers instead of 14 kilometers. And we saw, um, and in this case, we saw uh, brine up to almost 200 meters. Um, what we've done so far, we already finished, but it's 12 platforms, 24 holes, about 2,500 uh, meters drilled, and uh, we, we, a combination of diamond drill holes and, and rotary holes. This is a bit of geology. What we, the, the interesting part about this is that we found two types of aquifers. We have a, a, an upper aquifer and a lower aquifer. The upper aquifer is about 70 meters, up to 70 meters deep on average, and then there's a halide core there without not much porosity, and then again, at about 120 meters, we have a low aquifer that is still open. So we haven't even found the bottom of that yet. These are the drilling results. Um, as you can see, the drilling confirmed the high grade on the north side with up to almost 1,000 milligrams per liter, 600, 700, and so forth. And what we did is that we expanded our drilling down to the, what we call the southern target, um, where sampling work, about a meter, uh, gave us grades of almost maybe 200 milligrams per liter. Uh, when we drilled, we found four to five or even 600 milligrams per liter at depth, still open. So that expanded again, yet again, our, um, essentially, our targets to the south. 
And by the way, the impurity ratios did not change either on the drilling. It maintained very low on both the magnesium and sulfate. Pump and porosity tests, we also obviously did this uh, for the calculation of the resource, which is uh, imminent. Um, these are some of the results. Um, essentially, what we found here is extraordinary in terms of uh, the porosity and pump test. We, um, we believe we have more than enough uh, to produce uh, from our solar. And essentially, some of the results that we, we've gotten, um, you don't see those uh, anywhere in Argentina, and they're comparable to Atacama Solar. Oh, that didn't look very good there on the top there. Okay, so we also did process studies, and they, they, one of the reasons we were able to do this is because we have a lake or a reservoir or brine outcropping. Without that, we wouldn't be able to do the process studies because you need to bulk sample that and send it to labs. So we did this, and we've, um, the results came back with extremely positive uh, and that we are able to essentially have a very simple evaporation technology to produce lithium. Um, the recovery of 25 tons per hectare is comparable to any solar. And um, I think somebody mentioned yesterday that um, solars, uh, in terms of the brine, takes up to 18 months to, tw to two years to evaporate. That's wrong. Uh, I just want to make sure that everybody understands that. Our solar takes eight to 12 months. So, and it's a continuous batch process, not just one batch every 18 to, two mo to 24 months. It's a continuous batch after eight months. This is a comparison based solely uh, on the sampling work that we've done. We are the highest grade in Argentina, and we are the fourth highest grade in the, in the world in terms of brine. This tells you a little bit about the impurities. As you can see, we're at the bottom corner, the red dot. This tells you, all things being equal, where your cost is going to be. So the, you, know, you want to be on the zero, zero. However, the majority of the solars are way off that. So um, the producing ones um, are in the, you know, the 10 range there on the sulfate. And then anything beyond 10 on the magnesium side, almost, you know, they're essentially very difficult to put in operation because of the cost associated with taking the magnesium out. There's a little bit of our history timeline and track record. We've moved very fast. Um, what I want you to take away from this slide is that we just discovered this property in December of 2015, and we're about to issue a, a resource statement in the next couple of weeks, and we'll have a PA by Q3. And we've been able to raise, we're fully financed to feasibility. There's no more dilution. Bit of the timeline. Well, that, that didn't look good either. Um, and. Um, this essentially just tells you about how, what, what's going to happen uh, over the next little while. We're going to have a feasibility in 20 uh, this year, I mean, sorry, PA this year, and a feasibility one year after. The pilot plan will have results continuously, but uh, we'll finalize in Q3 of next year. A little of our capital structure, uh, which I mentioned before, we have about 30 million today in the bank, um, and uh, we have a pretty good uh, ownership and, and institutional base. So high grade, low impurity, simple evaporation process, large project, 35,000 hectares, 100% owned, and we're not sharing the project with anybody. So uh, the straws that are going are our straws, and we'll pull whatever we need to pull out. And we have an experienced team. So catalyst, resource, and PEA this year with uh, feasibility uh, next year. Thank you very much. Thank you.